So I'm long overdue for a piano fun fact, and I've got one for you here. This one is from a book by Clara Clemens. Clara Clemens, you might recognize that last name, daughter of Samuel Clemens, otherwise known as Mark Twain. Yes, Mark Twain's daughter wrote a book entitled My Husband Gabrilovich, and her husband was Osip Gabrilovich the Russian pianist who was a great romantic pianist of the late 19th century, early 20th century, and who studied with the famous Theodor Leschetizky in Vienna, uh, as did Clara too. She was a fine pianist as well. And uh, she includes at the end of her book, the Ode to Music, which is a series of verses written by the organist Chandler Goldthwaite. And she includes them in the book because her husband, Osip Gabrilovich, the wonderful pianist, found so much pleasure in these verses <laughs> uh, that apparently he would read them whenever the occasion afforded him an opportunity. So I am going to read Chandler Goldthwaite's Ode to Music as published in Clara Clemens' 1938 book, My Husband Gabrilovich. One night last week, twas mighty cold, with wind and rain and snow. I'm sitting with my slippers on before the radio. Twas pretty nearly supper time, and as I turned her in, some guy was quoting price of lead, of copper, zinc, and tin. Says I, it being Thursday night, I'll wait for Rudy Valley. Then suddenly comes busting in my little sister Sally. She looks at me a moment, as though she didn't know me and seeming real excited, like she'd something swell to show me. Oh, Bill, she cried, I hope tonight you haven't gotten dated, because if you ain't, we're going to town to get you educated. She says my liking radio is getting most too chronic, and so she's got some tickets for the New York Philharmonic. Aw, oh, gee, says I, the weather's bum, and tell you honest, Sally, I'd rather stay at home tonight than tune in Rudy Valley but I can see she wants to go in all that snow and rain, so I slips on the soup and fish, and then we hops a train. The show's on at Carnegie Hall, so we goes up in style, riding in a taxi costing 30 cents a mile. And when we gets there at the hall, we looks around, I swan, the men is all dressed up to kill. The dames ain't got much on. Our seats was in the middle, so we went there quick and sat just to try to get familiar, with the sort of joint we're at. The balconies was all filled up, a big mob on the floor. I heard some bells start ringing and the usher closed the door. The stage was all filled up with men and golly, what a noise. There's everything from great big horns to little bits of toys. Bull fiddles laying all around and groans and grunts and hoots because everywhere up on the stage, the guys was playing toots. Way in the back, I sees a horn near where the drummer sat, sure must take a pile of wind to blow a toot on that. The program book was full of words, all Polak, Greek, and Guinea, and there I spots the leader's name, Arturo Toscanini. The program's full of crazy names, Tchaikovsky, Shostakovich, it seems some bozo's gonna play named Osip Gabrilovich. I turns in whispers to a dame beside me where I sat, the bird must be a Bolshevik to have a name like that. The dame, she turns and looks at me. She's kind of up in arms and giving me a frigid stare. She says, he's playing Brahms. Then all at once it quiets down, the lights get low and dim, and Tusky walks out on the stage. I guess right off twas him. The gang all give him quite a hand, and when the clapping's done, he waves a funny-looking stick, which means the show's begun. Then played a piece all mighty long. I thought twould never stop. The crowd all seemed to like it, but for me, it was a flop. Old Toski waved his arms around like something scarcely human. The program said the piece was by some <laughs> named Robert Schumann. Before the end, the time's so long, I'm getting pretty drowsy. The dame beside me likes it swell, but me, I thinks it's lousy. At last, it's intermission. So the crowd all gab and gossip while Toski beats it out backstage to look around for Ossip. The orchestra all shuffle off in every sort of manner while in comes two big husky brutes a-lugging the pianer. The intermission's over 
and the dame beside me cries, He's playing Brahms D minor, and she sighs and shuts her eyes. Well, I'm really kind of curious, because with a name so weird, I'll bet he carries bombs around and wears a Russian beard. But when he walks out on the stage, to my complete surprise, he's tall and thin and dignified, unlike them Russian guys. Then Toski starts to strut his stuff, and Ossip sits him down in front of the piano, but he doesn't make a sound. I leans to Sal and whispers low, I'll bet the boys forgot it. When off he hauls with both his fists, and golly, how he swat it. The music sort of rambled on for minute after minute. I would have liked it better if there'd been some singing in it. Towards the end, they all got going. Such an awful piece. It got most as exciting as a motorcycle race. Then Ossip throws up both his hands. I knew the race was won. He'd come in several lengths ahead before the piece was done. Then Toski comes in second, looking grouchy as you please. The music wasn't much, but Oshup sure could claw them keys. The mob all seemed to like it. They applauded long and loud. I guess the reason was it was an educated crowd. And then I glances at my watch. It said 15 to 10. I says to sis, let's beat it, kid, before they play again. Perhaps this highbrow music ain't exactly up my alley. Some folks can have their symphonies, but give me Rudy Valley.